Welcome students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. Um, in this series of videos, we're, we are working on the chapter 17 drill problems and you were assigned the odd number problems in the digital study guide. However, we're going to be covering more than just the odd number problems because uh, you have to create schedules uh, and you'll see what I mean. So. Um, before I move on, remember if you don't understand something, you know, feel free to pause the video, go back and rewind and watch it again. And if you still don't understand, you know, contact an instructor either by phone or, you know, through clicking on contact us from your home page or your my courses page. A after you log into the website, the Penn Foster website, <clears throat> excuse me, and you know, send us an email in order, uh, you know, with whatever you don't understand, and we'll try to help you out. And so here we're going to be working on um, drill problems one through uh, one through eight, right? And even though it's the you know you're assigned the odd numbered problems, um, we're going to create a depreciation schedule and it happens to be over eight years and each year is one problem. So we're just going to do them all, all right? So it says here, from the following facts, complete a depreciation schedule by using the straight line method. Okay, so for the straight line method, um, remember we're taking our, uh, you know, our purchase price, you know, our cost, less the uh, residual value or the uh, salvage value. And then we're dividing it by the life, the useful life, in number of years. Okay, so if our cost is thirty thousand, and we have a residual value, meaning at the end of eight years, that's the amount that we feel the uh, asset will be worth. When we subtract that thirty thousand, and that's over eight years for our useful life. So thirty less six is twenty-four thousand. And we divide that by eight years, which means we are going to depreciate the asset $3,000 each year. So that's the formula. And that's calculating the straight line depreciation. Now, we have to create the schedule. All right? So um, over here, we have end of year. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So the cost is going to be thirty thousand, okay, and that's going in this column. It's always going to be thirty thousand. Yes, repetitive work, okay, but it needs to be done. If you're doing it by hand, you're doing it by uh, you know an Excel spreadsheet, copy and paste that type of thing. Okay, so the depreciation expense for the year we just calculated was $3,000, and it's going to stay the same for each and every year. Okay. Because that's what straight line is about. It's figuring out how much depreciation for each year. All right, so now, <clears throat> when it comes to accumulated depreciation, what we are doing is, is we're always taking what the balance was at the end of the la the previous year and adding the depreciation for the new year. So when we first get started here, our uh, at the begin at the uh, beginning or the end of the previous year, we have a zero for accumulate depreciation. So when we add it to the depreciation for the depreciation expense for this particular year, that's going to give us our accumulated depreciation, you know, at the end of the year. In this case, it's three thousand dollars. <throat> now, you can, um, you know, either continue on to the right here and do the book value, or you can continue on down doing the accumulated depreciation column. Let me just do the depreciation column. All right, so I have because it's the same process. So we take the 3,000 from the end of the previous year, which is the end of year one, and we're going to add the depreciation for the next year, which is 3,000. That gives us 6,000. Okay, so 3,000 plus 3,000 gives us 6,000. Right, and you're um, when you're doing accumulated depreciation, uh, you know, even though this one this seems relatively easy, okay, 
remember that the amounts, depending upon the method you're using, the amounts are going to be different for how, what your depreciation expense would be for each and every year. For a straight line, it's always the same, but for units of production, that amount can vary from year to year to year. All right, so you're always going to have to do the math from that perspective. What it was at the end of the previous year, in this case 6,000, plus whatever amount it is for this year, in this case it's 3,000, and that we add those together, so that gives us nine. And, then, and since all we're doing is just adding 3,000 each year, that's 12, that's 15, that's 18, that's 21, and that's 24. Okay? And you know you're right because if you take the 30,000, which is your cost, and you subtract your accumulated depreciation at the end of the, uh, the useful life, so in this case here, it's 30,000 less 24,000, which gives us 6,000. Well, that should equal your book value at the end of these, at the end of the useful life. Okay. So it's sort of like a double check so that you know you did things right. So um, your book value at the end of the year, okay, at the beginning of the year, our cost was 3,000. Okay, and I'm going to change color pens here. So our cost um, was thir uh, was thirty thousand, and we depreciate it. So we're subtracting the three thousand of depreciation expense for the, that particular year, and that gives us all right twenty seven thousand is our book value. Remember, book value was the cost less the accumulated depreciation. Okay, that's what our equals our book value. Right. So now notice I took the depreciation expense for the first year of three thousand. Well, I could have either used that number or I could have used this number here. All right. I should be using the accumulated depreciation, but in the first year it's the same, so it doesn't matter which one I use. But going forward, we are going to have to use the accumulated depreciation, okay? And not the depreciation expense for that particular year. Why? Because, like I said, it's the co the book value was cost less the accumulated depreciation, so our cost is thirty thousand. Less the accumulated depreciation of three thousand gives us twenty-seven thousand. And we're going to do the same thing for year two. Our cost is thirty thousand less the accumulated accumulated depreciation of six thousand means it's twenty-four thousand is our book value. Okay, and as, as you notice that the book value, you know, if it started out at thirty thousand, it decreased by three thousand. So it decreased by three thousand. You know, here where the accumulated depreciation is adding 3,000 and our book is going up by 3,000 and our book value is going down by 3,000. So I end up with 21, 24, I'm sorry, 18. 18, 15, 12, 9, and then we end up at 6,000, which we know is correct because, again, we're taking that cost less the accumulated gives us that uh, residual value and that's that's the amount that we decided upon right up front okay so that's creating a depreciation schedule for uh, straight line depreciation you know when you erase all of this extra this is what it all should that's exactly what it should look like okay all right, so with that, um, I'm going to stop here and go on to the next uh, schedule in the next video.